Hi, I'm Lauren Kennedy, the art teacher from Chavez Leadership Academy. People say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and that may be true. For example, I, the beholder, believed that I looked more beautiful about two months ago when I had a fresh haircut than I do now that I'm not allowed to get my hair cut and it's starting to grow like a cheetah pet and my curls are out of control. And sorry guys, here we are. Anyway, regardless of your opinions about beauty, some things are simply more pleasing to look at than others. So why is that? What makes one photograph? Yes, we're focusing on photographs. What makes one photograph more pleasing to look at than another? Today we're going to explore that as I teach you how to compose a balanced, beautiful image. Hint, hint, my hair is not so balanced right now. All you need for this lesson is some kind of camera. To start off, take two minutes to go find an image that you find aesthetically pleasing. Aesthetically pleasing means you think it looks good. So you think it looks good because of the composition, how it's put together, how the pieces make up the whole, not because of what's in the picture, okay? I love pecan pie, but I'm not going to choose a picture of pecan pie just because it's pecan pie. I'm gonna choose the picture because the picture itself looks good of pecan pie. All right, <laughs> take two minutes, go find an image, whether it's online or something you have physically, it could be in a magazine cereal box, get creative, two minutes, go. Okay, so why did you choose this image? You might be thinking, I don't know. I just chose it because I like it, and that's totally fine. We have this intuitive sense, like that gut feeling of what we like and don't like. But chances are that you also chose that picture because the composition is balanced. You maybe didn't think that, but your eye said, this is yummy, I like this, because it's balanced in some way. Let's look at some examples of balance to help you better understand and see if maybe your image fits into one of those categories. There are three main types of balance, symmetrical, asymmetrical, and radial balance. In this first picture, we see symmetrical balance. Symmetrical balance means that if we're to divide the picture down the middle, it's pretty much the same on both sides. You can think of it like butterfly wings or a mirror image. It's like a reflection. Let's look at another one. Okay, now this is another symmetrical photograph. But what's different about this one? Yeah, so in this one you can see that instead of being divided along a vertical midline, it's divided along a horizontal midline here. And this one actually is a reflection, like a mirror image. I took this picture in San Francisco. There was a nice rainfall, and I got to capture the reflection of street art. Okay, now this is a different kind of balance. In this photograph, what we see is radial balance. Now, what does radial sound like? Think of the words that you've heard before. Any words that sound like radial? Well, if you guessed radius, you're absolutely right. They come from the same root word, right? So here, like the radius of a circle, right? Radial balance starts from a center point and moves outward in a circular fashion. So you can see like the lemon here and then my grandmother's doily beneath it and so on. You can see a little bit better here, that radial fashion. We see radial balance quite a bit in nature with flowers and seashells. You get that spiral outward. Uh, mandalas are a great example of radial balance in art. Okay, now we're looking at asymmetrical balance. Asymmetrical, right? It's like symmetrical balance, but A, it's the opposite. <laughs> and what I mean by that is it's balanced simply because it is. It just works. The size and weight of objects or parts of the image just balance each other out. Now that might not sound like a very good reason, so photographers have developed this uh, rule of thirds. Photographers go by the rule of thirds for some guidance in how to understand asymmetrical balance and really use it in powerful ways. So let's take a look with this one. So I drew this grid. If you notice, the green lines show vertical thirds, right? I cut the frame into thirds vertically and horizontal thirds, right? 
So there are three pieces, vertically and horizontally, which make a grid of three times three equals nine. All right. Photographers say that if you place points of interest along these intersections, people will look at the photograph longer, that it's actually more interesting because the eye wants to travel through. So for example, with this photograph, very close up to this man who I saw performing outside of Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City, if I had put his nose smack dab in the middle, some people might say that's not as interesting. It would be symmetrical, right? Like his face is symmetrical, but by shifting it over a bit and putting his nose on this intersection, it creates a bit more space for our eyes to travel and look into his eyes and then travel to this breathing space over here on the left side. If I had centered his face and made this a perfectly symmetrical photograph, we wouldn't have this breathing room that gives us that space to look at the photograph longer. Let's look at another. Okay, so again, asymmetrical balance. You notice here, right, we have hands working. There's a lot of action. Um, this artist in Oaxaca is carving incredible detail uh, to do some printmaking. And then behind him, you notice the background's really boring. It's pretty bland, right? Like there's not a lot going on. And that actually helps create some balance, right? Because it's a little bit heavier, more dense up front in the foreground and a little bit more open and spacious in the background. We can also see here that his knuckles are on that point, those points of interest there, right? Which just guide us to the movement to follow his tool working and go into that breathing room in the background. And of course, you can kind of see here too that this lower third is like his artwork, his hands are in that middle third, and then there's that empty space, that breathing room in the background. Okay, so like I said, now we're going to look at some photographs and I want you to identify what type of balance you see. Is it symmetrical? Is it asymmetrical, which we just looked at? Or is it radial balance? If you guessed radial balance for this one, you got it. Okay, so when we look at a tire, you've got that radius, that center point, and moving outward. And this one kind of spirals. And yes, that is the tire of my car. What about this one? Yeah, asymmetrical balance, right? So you can see that rule of thirds coming into play again, where our subject is on that left third, right? Gives us some breathing room over here, right? And it allows us to be drawn to look at her hand in that beautiful light. What kind of balance do you see here? Yeah, we've got that symmetrical balance with that vertical divide there, right? And of course, it's not perfectly symmetrical, but pretty close to it. We've got that fan of the agave on this side, as well as this side, and then the mountains in the background. What about this one? What kind of balance would you say here? Yeah, asymmetrical balance. Now, this one might not fit the rule of thirds perfectly, but I did want to share because um, how there's this balance between the light and the dark values. And what about this one? So yeah, we've got that asymmetrical balance again, and we can use the rule of thirds as a guide, but I really want you to just see here, right? We've got this line of dogs, and that diagonal starts to guide our eye towards the background, right? So we can follow those dogs and look at each one. How about this one? What kind of balance do you see here? Yeah, so again, we've got that um, symmetrical balance. And that's it, nice job. Your call to action for this lesson is just to take four photographs, but each photograph needs to show a different kind of balance. Now, I know I only taught you three kinds, but stick with me. The first one is symmetrical balance. The second, radial. The third, asymmetrical. And the fourth is what I call ugly balance. It doesn't have balance, you don't like it. It's something you look at and you're just like, ugh, this is an ugly photograph. I don't wanna look at it. 
The reason I'm asking you to do that is so that you can become more aware of what you don't like to better enhance what you do. Since four photographs isn't many, I encourage you to practice more. Beyond all these lessons, just remember, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and we have a natural sense of what looks good. So trust that sense, go with it. Don't worry so much about what other people think. These rules are just a guideline to help you better see balance in the world around you, unlike my hair. Looking forward to seeing you in our next lesson where we'll talk about light. Thank you.